I was getting fed up of being labeled as the serious actor. And I wanted to be, oh, who, who, which actor doesn't want to be famous? Which actor doesn't want to, to be popular? I mean, come on. Sure, I wanted to be famous and I wanted to be popular as well. It was just my good luck that the kind of films I did at the beginning of my career came along. I didn't choose them, they chose me. Why should you watch? Because everybody likes to hear a good story. I don't think you can disagree with that. You know, right from the time you're a baby, in a, uh, you know, being put to sleep by mama, and uh, she tells you these stories about, you know, uh, poor princesses and uh, princes who come to rescue them and a wicked sorcerer and the dragon who and the horse who flies and so on. We all get turned on to stories very early, I think, because of the influence of mothers, <laughs> mainly. I don't know too many fathers who tell stories to their children unless they are, they are boastful ones. Um, yes. But I do know a few, <laughs> okay, that's good. and uh, I'm one of them. <clears throat> so I think this fascination with uh, listening to a good story, whether it's told to you via pictures, or whether it's told to you via uh, music, or whether it's told to you via opera, or whether it's told to you via uh, actors on stage, uh, but uh, I think that the content of the story is most important, you see, and that is why though we've performed Ismat Apa Ke Naam in Dubai a few times, um, our sponsors still felt confident that we could pull in an audience. And um, because it's it's been very, we've received a lot of love every time we've performed there. And we've had a, a mix of uh, Indian and Pakistani uh, people who live in Dubai, which is quite wonderful. And uh, uh, so that's the reason you should see it. If you, if you want to hear three really cracking stories written by one of India's greatest writers, uh, she wrote in Urdu uh, and her, her work has been translated into English, which are rather poor translations. They don't do justice to it, but it, no translation ever can, you know. So I'd, I'd suggest to anybody who's listening and who's interested in Ismad Apa, to, uh, to to not read the stories in English first. Okay. To read them. I think read them either in Devanagari or read them in Urdu if you read Urdu. I see. Because the, the the beauty of her her turn of phrase, and her her wicked sense of humor, and her her keen observation um, of life, it's quite something. Really, that's brilliant. And um, I know you, you, uh, your wife was telling me that you are a very tough uh, taskmaster when it comes to Urdu. And her Urdu was, let's say, questionable, I would say, in the beginning. Now I'm sure she's aced it, nailed it. But how did you, were you frustrated? How frustrating was it to perhaps, you no, know, uh, mold actors no, no, who don't know the language? No, really, because, no, because Ratna has a facility with languages. Ah. Okay. She speaks uh, 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 Hindi, of course, she speaks Marathi, she speaks Gujarati, she speaks a bit of Bengali, and she can understand a bit of uh, uh, Kannada as well. So uh, it uh, Urdu wasn't such an alien language. Mm. And uh, she has a gift for speech, which uh, in fact, the first time I watched her rehearse, which was around the first time we met while rehearsing a play for Satya Dubey, oh. I was very impressed by the clarity of her voice and uh, uh, her diction and uh, she easily managed it she well she had a tough time with certain things because i kept correcting her again and again because these are not sounds your tongue is accustomed to you know the hers and the hers and the hers. the same way as my tongue is not accustomed to the south indian languages sounds yeah, you know, I had to do, uh, I've, I had not had to do, I did happily, uh, two Kannada films uh, a long time ago. I did uh, one Malayalam film, which was, uh, you know, I've just found it impossible to get my tongue around those those sounds. And no matter how hard I tried, <laughs> even if I got the words right, they had to dub my voice because uh, I'm, I, don't, I'm not have, I don't have that facility that Ratna has. I and see. then Hiba, the other actor in it, my daughter, Yes. Um, uh, uh, first language she learned to speak was Persian, so for her Urdu was not no obstacle at all. And um, uh, Ratna had a reservation about, will anybody understand this? 
uh, wouldn't it be boring to see just one actor on stage uh, just talking away and initially that was the conception I had for the production but as we kept rehearsing more and more ideas kept occurring to me because the stories Isma Tapa has written a lot of them yes. sound like they're from my family they I know this territory you know uh, of the, uh, the the fading aristocracy uh, the small town Muslim uh, you know, uh, uh, people and their tendencies. And uh, I, 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 f I really identified completely with it. I just found a tremendous resonance. I felt she's talking about my family. I see. And so, so as I kept thinking about it, as we kept rehearsing it, uh, more and more ideas kept occurring to me, visuals from my childhood uh, in this little place that my family comes from, kept coming back to me. And so I just incorporated all that. So. It's, it's a storytelling using theatrical devices. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, that's how I would sum it up. How do you define yourself as a director? Do you have certain uh, uh, way of functioning? Are you, are you, do you tell what to do? Like, or, or do you show them? How, what's your process like? No, I never, I never show the actors anything. Because uh, as it is, most of them, apart from my wife was, are in awe of me and so if I demonstrate something uh, you know it's not a good idea okay. then they end up becoming a little limitations of me so I I don't you know to tell you the truth when I it's always the play which chooses me it sounds like a cliche but it's really true that every time any play that I've done as a professional has been one which I happened to read and felt impelled to do mm. whether it was waiting for godot or whether it was the zoo story or whether it was the kane mutiny court martial or whether it was uh, uh, you know a, a julius caesar or anything including the stories by ismat Choktai, which we've been doing for almost 20 years now several of the stories we have staged so i when i begin a play i really can't claim i understand it uh, I, the process of understanding happens while you're engaging with it. Okay. So I never decide. Um, I make several actors read and um, uh, I then decide who will play what. I never decide the set. I never determine the moves and I never fix them in stone. I leave freedom uh, for the actors to add what they feel they should. Mm. And... Uh, no, nothing is rigid okay. that you, you, have get up this, you have to get up at this time, you have to go at this, at this time. all that stuff I don't. So, so I, I, I try to help them trust themselves uh, so first, um, Are first you of all, yeah. which is very important before, sorry to interrupt you, but first of all, before we begin anything, I make them read and 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 read, and read the script. So they absorb what is being said before they start showing off their, their acting abilities. Okay, sorry, what were you asking? I'm saying you're very democratic then as a director because I've heard of a theatrical uh, maven saying, you know, it's my way or the highway. And they love yeah. it. They love throwing yeah. that weight around. They are the uh, trap genius, you know? Like, I am yeah. so good at what I do, but you don't know. I know. I know the best. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't Not believe that. I know the best. No, except where diction is concerned. That's more the best. <laughs> then, the best. then it's my way or the highway. <laughs> Particularly I, I, since we do so much in Urdu. Yeah, of course. I feel yeah, in Urdu is such a, a it's a, it's a difficult language and people are quite harsh. If you get it wrong, like, when I speak Hindi, I get it. If, get if, if you think Urdu, you speak Malayalam, which language do you speak? Malayalam. I speak Malayalam well. Oh, I boy. Yeah, I, if you think Urdu is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Malayalam is its mother, you know. <laughs> is it? Okay, I feel slightly better. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. think all the characters in this play are, you know, con uh, relevant uh, for the contemporary audiences? Because somewhere I feel we have social media now. We can't even decide whether we want a vegan burger or not. How do we really relate to something that was written so many years ago? Do you think... Because... Yeah. Do I think that it's relevant? Yeah, I hate that word, but... Uh... It's relevant. Let's say, does it appeal to our... Contemporary, I mean, I, that's I, I, I think so because human nature has changed. <laughs> you know, the psychology of intimate relationships hasn't changed. The tendency to paint women into a corner, 
hasn't changed. The tendency to reduce women to helpless creatures who need protection uh, hasn't changed, true. you know. And, uh, and that is what Ismat's writing is all about. All her stories about women, uh, really? it's, it's too, uh, you know, too, too uh, mundane to call her a feminist. She's not a feminist, she's a humanist. And she talks about the pain that she has seen and the pain that she feels for. And in fact, she says, I don't write political stories because I don't know about the farmer. I don't know about the mill worker. I don't want to give half-baked ideas about them. I write about people in societies I know. And uh, uh, that is why I think you'll be astonished. Uh, do you follow much Urdu or not? I do, I do. I enjoy it. I find it very romantic. But yeah, man, I, think you I, think enjoy these, I think you'll enjoy these plays, even though you may not understand the, the intricacies of the language. May not. But, uh, but uh, you, will, might, you, you will probably be surprised at how relevant uh, the whole issues that she talks about are uh, even today. I mean, the first story is about a, a, a village girl who gives birth to a baby in a train, yes, you know. Exactly. Till today, you read stories of labor women who give birth aboard a local train, you know. Uh, the second is about this man who deserts his wife and then keeps coming back. And it's a very funny and very tragic story at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the third is about an elderly bachelor and a young servant girl. So they're, they're pretty <laughs> spicy, the third one in particular. <laughs> I'm sure I've heard that. I've, I've read yeah. the reviews and I was like, okay, you're going to town with it, aren't you? You had a bit of fun, wicked fun. It's for an actor, oh, yes. it's a um, challenge. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. absolutely, yeah. If you can't have fun on the stage, then, then you should not be an actor. <laughs> That's right, I'm sure. And speaking of fun, I think this is the most fun you've had. I think you're going through the best phase in your career. You're doing roles in series, in theater. You're doing what you love. And I think there's a lot of work for you. Am I wrong? Or I just feel you're no, you're, absolutely, you're on the ball, absolutely on the button. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself more than I have through, in fact, since I turned 50 and, uh, uh, you know, sort of receded into character actor category, <laughs> I was receiving more interesting parts than I did as a young man. Uh, leaving aside the, the early phase of my career, yes. when I got these wonderful uh, parts in all these great yes. movies, Masoom being the culmination of it, there were movies like Akrosh and Nishant and Mantan and, yes. you know, so many of them, uh, Albert Pinto and Jani Vidoyaro and everything. But uh, then I went through a bit of a bum phase uh, where I had, where I, I decided to make a lot of money and, <laughs> and I managed. Selling soul. We call it yeah. selling your soul phase. Yeah, absolutely. And and I saw no reason why I shouldn't work for money rather than sit at home. Uh, why should we be ashamed of working for money? And what else do we all do? Yeah, you money know? is so good. Never, Greed is I, good. I, I, sure. Greed good. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. Good those, who, those who say money can't buy happiness don't know what they're talking about. You know? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So, why do people with money say crap like that. I, I, I would, I would, I would imagine so. No, but the thing is that the commercial industry uh, has given me a good life, and I don't deny that I wanted to be part of it. I was getting fed up of being labelled as the serious actor, and I wanted to be. Who, who, which actor doesn't want to be famous? Which actor doesn't want to be popular? I mean, come on. Sure, I wanted to be famous and I wanted to be popular as well. It was just my good luck that the kind of films I did at the beginning of my career came along. I didn't choose them, they chose me. Sham Benegal spotted me and then Govind and then Saeed and Ketan and everybody else. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the phase, though I didn't enjoy it, uh, where I did two shootings a day for two different films, you know, because it gave me a good life. It exposed me to an audience which didn't know me. Uh, and then films like Karma and uh, films like Three Dev got me through to a mainstream audience, uh, which I appreciate. And but but I have to say that that, that what I enjoy most, uh, which I what I've always enjoyed most, is to do films which are a mirror of their times. You know, um, and I think those are the films that are important. And those are the films that will be important for posterity. Uh, 
Mm. It's quite okay with me. I don't know if you've heard of these recent films called uh, Bheed and yes. Afwa, made by Sudhir. Okay. Bheed was made by Anupam Sinha. And uh, another film called Faraz, uh, made by Hansel. Yes. All, all, all of which collapsed at the box office. And a film like Kerala Story is doing roaring business. It's okay. That's the thrill the audience provides. These films don't, but I don't regret, and the, these filmmakers should not regret having made these films because they will be there a hundred years later. Yeah, it's a record they, of time. Yeah, it's a record of their times. But in all seriousness, last question, of course, I know you're very tired, but are you loving this space? What kind of a moment are you having right now, Mr. Shah, in your life, career? I'm loving it, absolutely loving it because I'm not being pressured uh, to, you know, to do anything. I'm not giving in, uh, I'm not getting those pressures now. I'm relieved that I'm not uh, being asked to do intense, lengthy parts any longer. I'm relishing doing cameos in movies made by friends like Vishal, like Anubhav Sinha, um, you know, like uh, Homi, uh, Ajanya. What's <laughs> Ajanya, yeah. I hope only you're listening to this. I forgot yeah. your bloody name. So, uh, beep again. <laughs> no, I hope Homi is listening to this. Homi is the funniest guy I know. So, I'm enjoying doing that, you know. Two or three days work with people you like and just go home and then and, and rest. And the rest of the time, read or, or, or do something else, you know. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to play the flute. <laughs> is that your so, thing now? So oh. to keep learning something at this age, otherwise, you know, things will begin to show cracks. What is the most useless skill you have acquired? I can tell you mine, I can squat and brush. <laughs> what can you do? There has to no, be no, no, I, I, can, I can read backwards very fast, you know. I got this, this thing on Facebook which had a whole passage printed backwards. And said, if you can read this, <laughs> you have an incredible talent, but a completely useless, irrelevant talent. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm so glad we're nailing this thing called life, where you are like uh, working like you're speed dating, basically. You're right. I love it. I love it. I hope you continue to speed date with roles. It, it works. You've done so well. And thank you for entertaining us. Uh, both sure. of you are so incredibly, the entire family is talented. Thank you for entertaining us. Can't wait to it's see so you all. It's I a blessing you. for us. I hope yeah. I'll see you at the show. Of course, okay. always. I won't miss it for the world. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.